G'day guys, Matty from Extreme Auto Caravan and Camping with you again today. This is a bush tracker. These are wicked vans. If you guys don't know much about the bush trackers, do a bit of research. They are they are probably one of the or amongst one of the best built caravans out there. So um really love these. Absolutely beautiful to work on. And if you know your bush trackers quite well, they've got this kind of nose cone that comes out the front. Um, and you know, your bed that runs into them. So there's a lot of space inside of them. And the under bed area is actually, it shares the, the front boot. So you can see I'm inside here, it's a massive amount of space. And this is where the factory power system is. And the battery system that used to be in here was in a large fiberglass kind of enclosure around here with a cheeky vent. And this had three AGM 120 amp hour batteries in it a bunch of old Xantrex stuff and um, they're, they're not bad as far as their 12 volt distribution is concerned but what we've done for these guys is a power up on a on a pretty big scale what you see here are two power pull scouts so these are rated at 310 amp hours each that's about eight kilowatt hours of lithium storage here these are in this location old mate is a bit of a cabinet maker, he's gonna build an enclosure for this and vent it, all right? So the factory vent's gonna go in place and if he wishes to add another vent, we've left him a bit of space in front of the batteries to um, comply with the new standard. So a vented enclosure under a bed, this is a situation where that would happen. So building this box fully sealed, you know, screwed down with no chance of these, these being as part of the habitable area. This is a classic example, short of, um, boarding off one of the sides and putting these separately completely off to the side and losing storage this is his most compact solution to allow these guys to still get a setup like this and uh, comply with the new standards that are about to hit us next week now eight kilowatt hours that's a lot of energy we've done 1200 watts of solar on the roof for these guys in the form of six 200 watt exotronic panels so both Solar controllers here are taking care of a left hand and a right hand array. We've done the Servo GX here with the Touch 70 on this, so it's a large touch screen. Stick around and I'll take you up and show you how that looks. Now, old mate, is um, he's got a very um, big DC charging system already in his CHOP 300. It's got a large Enerdrive system with a big DC charger. So we don't want to load that alternator up too much. So he wasn't super interested in pumping heaps of energy in from the vehicle. He just wanted to pump in something. And he, he's already told me that he actually never really plugs in um, his Anderson plug on this anyway. So traditionally, he's never been charging from the vehicle. He's just let the solar do its thing. And this only had, I think it had four 130s. So the old Kyocera 130 watt solar modules. And he's been, and it had an inverter in it. He's been living off that and everything's running fine. He just wants to do it all fresh and start again. So now this is a, a lot, a lot bigger system, he's going to get absolute nuts charge at 1200 watts of solar. Plus we've done the Red Arc DC charger for him. It is only the 25 amp model, but to get that 25 amps as well as the solar combined, that's still way more than he's ever had in the past. But the reasoning behind the small DC charger is purely because of his tow vehicle. He's already got the system in it. So he's got a, his Enerdrive 40 plus ramp right up to 50 with an Enerdrive battery. So that alternator is already, you know, pumping 60 to 70 to keep that DC charger going to produce the 50, so 100% efficient. And then you've got this one here singing along. So, uh, yeah, you don't want to push that alternator too much. Short of changing your alternator out and going to a better alternator, this is how you size the system up accordingly. You don't want to overload it and then this DC charger is cutting in and out or the one in the car is cutting in and out. That's, that's pointless. You, you want the charger to at least stay on when it's plugged in. So that's why we've done that. All of this stuff here with all of the LMI bus system fuses, the shunt is down there, so it's got the Victron Smart shunt. Can't see it, it's all tucked away. You never need to get to it. We've got the master fuse for the inverter down here, easily accessible, right there. 95 mil cable, the Multi Plus 2, because this is a bush tracker with a very high under bed area, so we're allowed to get the Multi 2 in here um, with that sort of sizing perfect height for it there's still a lot of space underneath for airflow left and right as and as you can see this is all open and also the mounting of these solar controllers take note of the way we mount our solar controllers guys 
99% of the time, we mount them vertically like this. The reasoning we mount them vertically is basically for airflow. So we don't like to jam these right up, up high somewhere. So when natural convection happens and airflow goes under the solar controller, it, it has nowhere to go. So you end up with these getting to their temperature, which is you know 40 plus degrees, and then they start to derate. Well, that's no fun. You, you want to try to inhibit airflow around the product as best as you can. Sometimes you don't have a choice and you just got to you know, vent so much that you try to inhibit airflow. But when you can, you always try and mount these vertically. We love to do that and we get great results. Um, and you can see the videos with our numbers we're getting. We've got hundreds of customers getting around the countries with, with systems like this, mounted like this, and they're producing big numbers day in, day out. They don't really derate. So something to keep in mind, guys. Try and keep them vertical. Like I said, there's the servo. All of the products are running here. It's all monitored up on the Touch 70. Master isolators, that's the battery isolator, and you will see us be uh, fit, starting to fit these as a standard now, basically to cover the battery. If there's a disconnect that's involved, if they work on the van, they store it, whatever they want to do, and they want to do a master kill, turn that. You can actually pull this knob out. This is a Victron switch, so you can actually pull that knob completely out. Security, no power will ever come on at all on this thing. There are a lot of LMI bus fuses here because this had an original power system set up in this location. So we've redone those circuits on the top section here. 50 mil cable comes in and then we've done the all the charges on the bottom. So you got solar right hand, solar left hand and DC charger here. And then flipping the form over here, sway control, Jack Anderson, main 12 volt and brakes. So this has the Dexter sway control that's been relocated and completely rewired. Display fuses are located behind that, easily accessible. Yeah. I think we should go and check out the touchscreen because it's in a really good location. Come with me. So fridge location, we've done it on the side for these guys at the customer's request. Yeah, we could have put it up in the uh, bush tracker position, which we've done them plenty of times up here. But like I keep saying to you guys, you've got to have this up if you want to see what's going on. So the original Xantrex inverter controller was in this location and the original battery monitor was in this location. But just to the left of it is where we've done the Touch 70. Right, we'll close that, we'll get into this. Now we've added a bunch of stuff for these guys. We're actually running the um, Harrier Plus at the moment on heat. We've got that cranked up just to smash some energy out of this because we are in a large storage shed here. So um, obviously we've got no sun, so we do have a sunny day. So we're gonna roll this out in a couple of hours time, it's only like 7.30. So we're gonna roll this out and we're gonna see what kind of numbers we get. Uh, what are we, sort of late October now, we should see some good numbers from the system. So we're smashing the battery down now. I'm gonna try and get it around the sort of 65, maybe 70% mark. I'll shut that AC down shortly, but check this out. All the tanks. We're actually two sensors short because we've run out of stock. So we've got, they're on a, a bit of a back order at the moment. So we've done the LPG and LPG right hand and left hand with the Mopeka sensors. We've also done the Mopeka sensors on his tanks. This thing has five tanks, so two more will show up here eventually. So you've got a drinking water tank and four water tanks. And look at that beautiful screen to see your tanks. Isn't that beautiful? So much better than the old type of little push button and you know, empty, quarter, half, whatever. This is accurate, and especially when you program, the, uh, program it correctly, you have clarity and accuracy like this. And there is no wiring between the sensor and the computer. So it's just less stuff to install. We love them. It's, you know, we don't, we don't do the installation of those um, differential pressure sensors too much now. It is these Mopeka sensors because it does the LPG, it does the water, it does your gray, it does diesel tanks. Pretty much monitor any tank you wish, guys. All on the Victron touchscreen. It's all monitored on the VRM portal as well. We've done a um, fridge temp sensor for these guys as well. As you can see there, the fridge is sitting on six degrees. And funny enough, the, the Mopeka show you temperature too. So you've got 15 degrees on those tanks. Not that you need to know what the tank temperature is, but hey, it's there. If you want to put a sensor on something to monitor temperature, you could do that. Cool, so we'll go into the inverter and you've got that mode that's on it now called sustain. So the second we plug this into the grid, it will instantly come up with sustain, where it's saying inverting. All right, so it'll say sustain there, and that will not charge the main battery 
from mains power. It'll sustain it at a preset voltage. It'll prioritize solar. If you are on the grid and you want to force charge really quickly, it's a matter of just going into menu, going into your charger and click press to start. Sure power will be used to complete a full battery charge for one time. Do you want to continue? Yeah, I do. So click yes. Don't, don't click this little tick box guys. Always click it here because it won't actually do anything. But if you wait, see it goes back. Perfect. Now when we plug in the grid, it'll actually start to charge the battery. It's ready to go. So it's prioritizing solar, which is nothing now, but the grid will do that. So let's show you that. So we'll put it to the uh, on mode and we'll wait for it to sense the grid. Once the grid comes up here, you will see how this will go into bulk. All right, so you go menu, inverter charger. See the sustain mode that I just spoke of? Sustain, let's start it. Now, it didn't do it before because we weren't plugged into the grid, okay? So I want this to happen now. Yes, please. Back to pages, then watch what happens. Take note of the shore power, guys. See? So you can see this has changed the bulk from sustain. So now we are charging this battery at that rate while still running the air conditioner, of course. So this would be, and, and this obviously this little brown symbol comes up with the up arrows. This would be you forcing a charge on the batteries from a generator just to top it up uh, from the grid if you're only on the grid for a few hours and then shooting off to a free camp. You can choose what to do now rather than suck all this energy out if you don't need it from the grid. It will, it will prioritize to sustain initially and then yeah. But you can turn this off at any time. You know, you couldn't do this before. So touch it, menu, go into your charger, press to stop. It's right in front of you, press to stop. Yes, I want to stop. Don't click the arrow, always click yes. And then back to pages and watch what, it'll be back in sustain. There it is. And this, because we're still on the grid, take note how this is kind of matching this. Right, and it's sustaining. So there is a bit of energy going into the battery because the sustained voltage we have set is for a predetermined number, part of our programming. So that's why a little bit more energy is going this way. And you can see that by the movement of these little blue bubbles. I call them bubbles. Cool, hey? And of course it wouldn't be a rundown video if we uh, didn't test some products. So, duction cooker. This is a beast. Like I've, I've used a fair amount of duction cookers now, um, which is, I'm you know, blessed to be able to do that. This one here is a T-Fow, T-Fow, yeah, T-Fow. And that's half full of water. Now I did a cheeky video a second ago. This thing just is a monster. So you click boil, oh, I'll flip you around. I'll bring you down on it, see what it's doing. This thing boiled that's fresh water now, that's cold water. This thing boiled, you can see the bubbles already coming up. Like this is a, you know, saucepan size. It boiled, like within a minute, it was like a vigorous boil. So in other words, this, this is a, it's a very thirsty one, but I tell you what, you know, obviously we're still running. Air conditioner going on heat, and that's our load. Like it's a really heavy duty induction cooker. It's up there with one of the big, big boys, but be close to 2000 watts surely. And from the batteries, so to boil that, that amount of water, it just took a minute. I'll keep it rolling on it. Look at that. Hopefully you can hear that, but she's, yeah, that's, that's vigorous. That's a heavy duty one. And if you're, you know, if you're doing sausages or, or meat or whatever, you, you know as well as I do, you're not going to have it on flat out. It just burns it. Yeah, you, know, you don't do that. You throttle it back. So look at that. How quick is this? That's less than a minute. That has to be less than a minute. Oh, it's going to get steamy in here. I'll shut that down. Look at that. Wicked. Toaster as well. So, all well, that toaster, that'd be 700 watts. I have turned that off, guys. So, air conditioner's still going. 
And so a toaster and an air conditioner is right there. We'll hit that induction cooker again. We'll go, we'll go big. We'll see if we can get it overload. Power boil. Yep. Let's get an overload. Wow. That's a big load. That's boiling away. Vigorous as. Cool. Get that one off as well. It's probably dusty and it's going to smell in here, so I don't want to stink out the customer's van. Beautiful. So air conditioner is still going, nothing shut down. If you do hit an overload, or if you do exceed what the inverter can do, it's just gonna throw an alarm up on the screen, and it's it's quite easy to see because this, this screen will shut down and it'll actually say alarm, or the um, devices will shut down. And then after a few moments, when it's happy, it'll come back on. All right, I think it might be time for solar and vehicle charging tests. Totally forgot, how good's this modification on the bush tracker? Put the washing machine down here, so this is under the bed area, so you just lift up the lid, that's from the inverter. Not sure how much water it would use. Um, put some comments down, guys. Let us know how much water these use on the standard cycle. So just that would be like a wash cycle there. Um, I'm not sure what they'd use. It'd be, be good to know. But hey, you know, run that from the inverter. Why not? That's what it's for. Do your washing in the bush. Limited to water, guys. All right, let's see what this uh, solar and vehicle is going to do. It's only like 9.30 at the moment. Not even that, sorry. I'm getting my times all. So you're like nine o'clock. We'll roll this out and we'll see what she can do. I'll just bring you under the tracker. So there's the Mopeka sensors there, all tucked out of the way for your gas. And the back side, seal the stone chips on the front. Right, so front side of the tank gets peppered with stones. Now the back side of the tank is where you put the sensor. You can see where there's no stone damage or minimal stone damage. You know, it's a lot, it's, it's smooth on this side. This side's peppered, see? That's why we put the Mopekas here on the trackers. All these poly tanks are really good. So there's like five tanks. One, excuse me, guys, I'm eating a bit of metwurst. I love this stuff. <laughs> um, two, three, four, or five tanks. So drinking water is this one. This is drinking water. And then you've got all your fresh water tanks. So this doesn't have a grey water tank, actually. So um, yeah, don't have to worry about monitoring that, but there are two sensors missing on those rear tanks there are not in stock, so they'll come in eventually. So there we are, old mate's gonna build and put a bit of foam around this. He'll put like a like a foam cover or some sort of rubberized cover to give it extra protection. And obviously if you need to remove this to replace the battery in a few years time, if it dies, which is all monitored up on that um, touchscreen too, so you can see the little three volt lithium battery if it's starting to drop away and you're getting poor signal between this and the servo. Uh, you can replace it nice and easy so cool all right now let's get into the uh, solar and vehicle charge all right we'll get this thing out in the sun see what she can do i thought we'd get a bit more sun but we've got overcast now this high level cloud but we're still getting good numbers it'll be just about oh sorry guys yeah, it's 9 30 at the moment so vehicle's not running oh, there we go 9 40 in the morning and we are getting 500 and something watts on this semi high level cloud day. It's a pretty good number for this time of the morning, 9.30, 9.40 in the morning. This number will increase during the day, but I might not be able to catch it because I'm out of here soon, but there we go. We are off grid and charging. Beautiful bush tracker, love this. Cool, so we're uh, about 10, 10.40 now, and the sun's come up a bit more, so we're not in, um, overcast now so let's see what we get oh mate's going to run the engine now so we should see another 25 amps coming on top of this number here wait for it to rise well there it is so we'll go uh, go to menu we'll put you into inverter only so we'll get rid of the shore power right shore power's disappeared now we're free camping so that vehicle and solar combined guys look at that 10.30, 10.40, we're getting 75 amps of vehicle charge and solar combined. It will not shut each other off. You are getting DC to DC charging from the vehicle here and solar combined. 
Very happy with the setup on this bush tracker. 1200 solar, 620 amp hour lithium, all the Victron fruit. Free camping. Done right. Thanks for watching, guys. Like and subscribe. I'll keep these videos rolling. Enjoy your beautiful weekend wherever you are. Thanks for watching.